Hello friends, today we're going to talk about how Langchain specifically is adapting to the new ChatGPT API that just came out. So as we all know, we saw the lovely blog post that says there's this new cool API from OpenAI. Well, this one's a little bit different. Um, and what's really amazing is that the day that the new API came out, Langchain and the team came out with a wrapper for it. And this enabled you to use that new API with the existing Langchain tools. However, as we all know, this new OpenAI ChatGPT API is, very, is a little bit different than the old ones that we used to have. So in this example, here's the uh, chat bot that we've worked with in the past. And what we actually have here is a series of messages. So here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's four messages. And as they show in their documentation, the new API actually takes a list of messages in there, which is interesting. It's not just text in and text out anymore. And the other little wrinkle that came in here as well is the concept of role. And so within role, we found three new roles, which is system, user, or assistant. And system is gonna be kind of like your boilerplate, the things that sets the stage of your conversation. The user is meant to be the human, the assistant is meant to be the AI, and again, the user is meant to be the human on this one. So what's super awesome is that just within five days, and so today is March 6th, and this was just earlier this morning, the Langchain team, Harrison tweeted out that they have proper chat GPT support for, uh, for Langchain, which is really, really cool. So they've introduced a lot of uh, new concepts here and they are open for feedback. So as you start to work with these, if you have any feedback, please let the team know. Um, the interesting parts is gonna be, um, they're introducing now chat messages within Langchain, which wasn't there before, chat models or models, uh, chat message templates and prompt values. Now, why are they doing this? Well, there's a new chat model interface, meaning with it's speaking in messages now rather than just text in and text out. Um, also because they wanna make it easy to swap between the two. So between normal uh, LLM APIs and chat-based uh, APIs. And then also they're anticipating other uh, participants within this world outside of OpenAI. So it's interesting that um, OpenAI was sort of a first mover with this one. And the message concept, while that's not novel, which roles you uh, choose to have, and even really having roles in general is a bit of a new topic. And so maybe they wanted to set the standard for what future people will have to go and do, but either way, Langchain wants to make this generic. Now, what I'd like to do is step through some code of all four of these different things. And so you can see how it's um, gonna be manipulated with that, or how you're gonna use it within the Langchain library. So that's what we'll do, that's what we'll do in the next part. Awesome, okay, let's look at some code here. So first thing that I'll say is up at the top of this, uh, uh, notebook here, we're gonna have the link to the official Langchain documentation, which this is heavily based off of. I'm just providing a little bit more voiceover for it. So we're gonna uh, import some some old things and some new things. The uh, chat open AI. This is gonna be the new chat model that Langchain has been working on. And we're gonna import prompt templates as usual. But then some other interesting pieces is now we have prompt chats within Langchain. So we have a chat prompt, temp chat prompt template system message prompt template, AI prompt template, and human message prompt template. We'll get into this in just a second here. And then uh, next, uh, we also have the new concept of AI message, human message, and system message. Now, well, let's just, before I even explain what these are, let's just go in and look at some examples. So the first thing that I wanna say is that um, your, uh, your simple input output still works if you wanted to use this model. And so here I'll initiate Oh, I gotta import my packages, of course. And so we have our chat um, LLM that's loaded up. And in this case, I wanna pass it the content of what is the name of the most populous state in the US? Now, with the normal way that we've seen beforehand, this would just be a plain string that we would pass into the LLM. However, in this case, we're gonna specify that it's a human message. And this human message is basically um, uh, Langchain's convention of saying, here's the message and the role is gonna be human. So, and we're gonna pass the content of what's the most populous state. And we'll go ahead and do that. And you see what we get in return is an AI message, meaning it's coming from the API that we just called and we get California that comes from there. So that's great. So like we said beforehand, a human message is gonna be the user in the previous example. So this is the message that's sent from the perspective of the human. And then we're gonna have AI message. This is the one that comes in response from the actual AI itself. We have a system message, and this is gonna be the, um, the setting the objectives that the AI should follow. So this is 
uh, the way I think about it is kind of like setting the stage or setting the scene about how you want the AI to interact. And then lastly, Langchain also has a pretty general uh, just chat message one where you can actually specify the role, but they're saying that you won't use this too much and I haven't had enough experience with it to uh, see how my workflow goes with it, but you know, we'll see. Um, so the interesting part about this is we're still gonna pass something to our, uh, our chat LLM that we instantiated above or initialized above, but in this case, we're gonna pass it a list. And this list we're calling messages, call it whatever you want, and we have two items. One is gonna be, well, in this case, it's a system message, and the other one is a human message. So I'm setting the stage and I'm saying to the AI, to the chat, saying, hey, say the opposite of what the user says. Okay, so that's what it's going to do. And then the user says, I love programming. So let's go ahead and run that. And the AI responds with, I hate programming. Okay, yep, that's the opposite from it. But then the interesting part here too is you can also specify multiple messages. So you can say, say the opposite of what the user says, I love programming, I hate programming, and the moon is out. Let's see what it says there. The moon is not out. Yep, that's interesting. And so if we wanted to, um, I wanted to show this even further to show you, um, let's do this. Um, what is the first thing that I said? And you said, I love programming. So you can see here how this messages, it actually acts like a, um, a history of messages. And so there's a little bit of me uh, memory that comes in there as well, which is cool to see. Okay. You can also do batch messages. So in this case, I have um, one system message, one human message, and then another system, another human. And this is, it's two lists that are wrapped in a list. And so what's gonna happen is this chat is gonna go through both of these and answer them, both of us for us. And in this case, I'm saying, you're a helpful word machine that creates an alliteration using a base word. And then the human says, base word, Apple. And we go ahead and run this. And so it's doing that. And then we have amazing appetizing apples. Okay, cool. And then we have dangerous dogs uh, demand due diligence. Uh, so this is an easy way. If you have multiple things that you'd like to call, you can go ahead and do that for that one right there. Okay, now let's get into prompt templates. So we are familiar with prompt templates in the normal way where you have a template, you have some tokens, and then you pass it into your language model with your uh, tokens filled out. It's very similar on the chat side. It's not much different. And so in this case, I'm creating another prompt template and I'm saying, uh, propose creative ways to incorporate food one and food two in the cuisine of the user's choice. Okay, now I'm creating a system prompt template with that and I'm passing in my prompt from there and I get my system prompt. And so let me run this, but I'm gonna call dot format, which is the easy way to um, see what your prompt would look like with your values filled out. And all of a sudden we get a system message. This is what it would look like. Um, and I specify bacon and uh, shrimp, bacon and shrimp right then and there. Okay, now I'm gonna make a human template. And in this case, it's kind of a lame template because it's just literally just the token, but we're doing this for just to show you. And so we're gonna have a human template, pass it in, human message prompt template from template, go ahead and do that. And I don't, um, I'm not printing out what this one would look like, but you'll, you can get the idea. Now, the interesting thing with prompt templates is the two that we just reviewed are gonna be message prompt templates. Well, in order to create a chat, prompt template, it's kind of like a pyramid. You need to have one or multiple uh, message prompt templates in order to make a chat prompt, prompt template. And it's kind of what it sounds like, but think of a message prompt template as just a template for one single message. A chat prop, prompt template is gonna be the combination of those, and so multiple messages combined, okay? So I'm creating a chat prop, prompt template, it's a freaking tongue twister, from messages and then I'm giving it the system message prompt and then the human's message prompt that we just created from above. And I'm gonna print this one out just so we can see what it looks like in terms of the chat prompt template. So we have the input variables, but the interesting part is gonna be right, mm, 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 right here, the template. You'll see that the template that they have uh, filled out is still the ones with the tokens because we haven't actually passed anything in there. And so then I'm gonna create a chat prompt so this is where we go and actually fill out what those values are, because now we're gonna get the full prompt. And I'm gonna pass the foods, and I'm gonna pass the human text, and I'm gonna get the chat prompt with values, which is just what I'm calling it, now that we've inserted these, insert these things. Let me go ahead and run that. So now what we have is we have our template, which has been filled out, and it's produced a, a, series, a list of messages for us. So now we have our system message, and then we have bacon and shrimp, and then we have our human message, uh, message which is, I really like food from Iceland. Sweet. So then what we can do then is we can pass our chat, uh, 
prompt with values to messages because this is the format right there. And we're going to pass that um, to our chat. And I'm just calling the dot content on the other side of it so that we can see what the output is really nice and easily. Let's give this a second here. And all of a sudden we get Icelandic cuisine tends to be heavily influenced by seafood and dairy products. Interesting. And then it gives us a list of how to do this with different shrimp, uh, different shrimp items in there. Now, say we wanted to do this from Germany, you can go ahead and run that. And you can see here that the prompt has been updated with, uh, I really like food from Germany, right then and there. And we'll see what this prompt response is right here. And great, skewers, shrimp and bacon soup, and shrimp and bacon sauerkraut. Interesting, I wonder if it's any good. Now the last part that I wanted to show here too is the streaming side of the house. So you need to import some other, um, other uh, imports right here, but then you can specify streaming equals true when you call out your, um, when you uh, in, in, initialize your uh, your model here, and then you do a callback manager as well, and you can go ahead and do the same thing, and all of a sudden you get some streaming as well, which is kind of cool. So that's how uh, Langchain is starting off with implementation of adapting to the new OpenAI chat GPT API and it's still pretty in flux. This was just released earlier today. So there's probably going to be a bunch of changes, but in case you want to get your hands on it, that's a quick overview of the process there. So hope you have fun and uh, please tag me and let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you later.